written up as. Well, that's what I would like to know, because uh, when I was a child, I was absolutely fascinated with the um, the expedition of Captain Robert Falcon Scott to the to the South Pole. Uh, and I used to just soak up all the information that I could. Um, so just imagine if Captain Scott's expedition uh, uh, was now. So let's just have a another look at this. So um, I'm following the progress of self-proclaimed explorer and motivational speaker Mike Horn who's reportedly realising his dream in the Arctic cold at 89 degrees north with his companion, Bourgeois Land. So he goes his, um, his uh, Twitter page, he describes himself as a prof professional explorer, a survival expert and motivational speaker and proud father, and currently realising his, his dream. So I wonder in which order all of those is important. Uh, that'd be interesting. So they've come up with some interesting, often scarcely, but I believe, credi scarcely credible photographs, such as the following, that shows up something interesting. So you could be excused for missing it on the original photograph. So just have a look here. And it's interesting that they're in the darkness, the dark of night, uh, pulling their, pulling sleds year to be going down there. Uh, so if you, this is, I think this is another photograph. Uh, so if you go in, uh, this is what you see. So that doesn't look at all what I would expect to see on the ice in the high Arctic. Um, and it looks uncannily like this. Um, these are the ice boulders that uh, Dane Wigington talks about, uh, ice nucleation on the Arctic. Um, so all of this would be uh, fascinating uh, if it could be taken for granted that they are where they are claiming to be. Um, so, and this is the problem. Uh, well, this is the photograph which they which they sent. Um, so apparently, according to them, the expedition set off in the Panagia, I don't know how do you pronounce it, from Nome, Alaska, at around the 3rd of September. Mm -hmm. And he goes on about this. Uh, It'll never be a straight, the smoothie journey to achieve a dream. dream. He seems obsessed with his dream. Don't let the wind and obstacles change your mind or your goal. Just to trust, Just adjust the sails accordingly. So everything is described with the excitement and the profundity of what I would call a schoolboy writing an essay about the greatest horror show on the planet and saying, guess what I did in my holidays? So he says again, many years ago, this panic year was just a dream. And today, every time I look at her, she reminds me of the dreams are not meant to just remain dreams. Dreams are meant to come true. Uh, doesn't sound much like someone who's motivated by uh, science and truth to me. By the 26th of September, they had reached their destination at 85 degrees north and they were dropped off for their march to the pole. So if the narrative is to be believed, it's deeply impressive. For a start, this vessel made it right through to 85 degrees north at a time of the year when the ice is supposed to be refreezing. Uh, so this is the this is the boat. So it's not exactly an icebreaker, uh, and they're saying it made it to eighty five degrees north. And uh, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't have any trouble believing them. So if I was to describe the feeling, it would be just as if we had the journals of Captain Robert F. Scott without the science of Doctor Wilson, Herbert Ponting, etc. So by the 26th, the time has come to jump off Panagia, um, say goodbye to the team and start our North Pole crossing expedition. It's difficult for me to hide my excitement on this special day. I've been dreaming. He's, he does a lot of dreaming. Um, so by the 17th of October, Mike and Bourgeois Land were de 
reporting being at their destination, we finally reached the latitude of 85 degrees north, 555 kilometers from the North Pole at a location Borschweyer and I are both satisfied to start our Arctic crossing expedition from. So here he is, he's, um, he's reporting his position where they start their, um, their expedition from. Uh, so throughout all of this, Mike and Bourgeois Land have been posting pictures showing the sun still shining at their location, ostensibly at around 89 degrees north. So lots of pictures like this. And then um, the skies were blue and the sun was out. Uh, so I just had to take a little selfie with my sleeping partner, Bourgeois Land. So here we are. Uh, oh, that was on October the 11th. Blue skies, sun shining. Oh, I wonder where they were. I don't think they're where I th thought they were. There's one tiny little problem connected with this. This is how things looked on October the 11th. Um, and it might have been twilight, but only outside the uh, the dark circle, not at 89 degrees north. And um, when there's a little bit of doubt in my mind, I go checking. So I did this and I found, when is the North Pole dark? 24 hours. The North Pole is dark for six months from the September equinox, September the 21st, to the March equinox, March the 21st. So I think that includes October the 11th, doesn't it? So the long marches every day seem to have stimulated Mike to wax lyrical about the meaning of life, but hasn't stimulated many thoughts about the reality he found himself in. So again, he's thinking about life. I don't think that we're only blessed with one life. I think every day is an opportunity for a new life, and this is entirely up to us and our mindset. So he's, he, I think he's more the motivational speaker than he is explorer, perhaps. And this is his latest update. This is just from two days ago. A very hard day, perhaps the hardest day so far. After the snowfall we had, the mild temperatures turned the snow into slush on thin ice. It sucks the sleds in and makes it very difficult for, and that, uh, for us to pull them. So that is on the... Um, just the other day, and it's just uh, presumably just short of 89 degrees north. Um, the great news, though, is that we finally reached the latitude of 88 degrees north, where the forecast predicts southern drifts for the next three days. So from now on, our goal is to stay beyond 88 degrees north. So there we are. That's a selfie, at, at almost at the pole. And then they describe the whole thing that they're uh, eating from about 5,000 to 5,500 calories per day and have not yet started to feel hungry in 12 days from now. We will have to increase our cal calorie intake to 6,500 to compensate for the colder weather conditions coming our way. Well, if you set off in winter, in the dark, uh, well, yeah, that's uh, kind of it, really. So, anyway, boy, this is sounding more and more like Captain Scott's ill-fated expedition in 2012. And um, yesterday, if yesterday was hard, today was even harder. Large areas with 20 to 30 centimetres ice, ice. I did not expect so much thin ice all the way up here. Salt water seeps into the snow on top and it's like glue. Feels like pulling 300 kilograms. At one stage, we even went back to pulling one sled at a time, but it took so long, so we change every half hour and just go slow. A battle for inches today, but we did a full day and that moral is what brings victory in the end reached 88. So that's probably the more useful, most useful thing that they've said so far. Um, they've revealed that the ice is very, very thin, 20 to 30 centimetres, 
and uh, they didn't expect so much thin ice and that the salt water is uh, seeping up into the snow. So that's all, uh, if we could believe what they have to say, it's all confirmation of what uh, Marco and I have been saying for nine months, uh, uh, a year or more. So there are very... There are numerous references made to thin ice, but very little surprise and no reflection on what it means is expressed. Um, so lots of pictures uh, like this. And again, <laughs> we see that ubiquitous sun, omnipresent. And here, uh, this is from... Uh, his mate, uh, I'm testing the thickness of the ice. The leads are so big that we might start on solid ice, but towards the middle it can be thin and weak. If the ice breaks and you fall in, there's no chance to get out of the water before you freeze. So, and here is another one. This is from a bit earlier. It's from the 5th of October. Tough day. Took two hours to get through the maze of broken ice mixed with water. A foot of fresh snow and a lot of thin, salty ice that was like glue under sleds. White out and strong winds from the southwest. Surprised to see much, so much thin ice this far north. Mostly uh, two inches, 50 centimetres and very broken. Hard to find good campsites. But we pushed hard and did a good day in position for reaching 88 degrees north tomorrow, if it goes well. Well, I have to ask the question, if the ice is as thin um, as he's talking about, two inches, how the hell are they walking on it? So, um, anyway, I'm afraid that after looking through this couple's account of their expedition, I'm reinforced to my view that there's very little one can believe in these days. If I had the wherewithal to produce nice photos from, say, north of Alaska, I could easily write as empty and meaningless an account as Mike Horn has. There is a lot that one could do with a website and a Twitter account. I would love to take all this at face value. It certainly confirms a, a few new things, but given the above, I'm afraid I can't. Uh, at the very least, this seems to have all the signs of having... Nothing to show for it after it is all over. Maybe a TED talk. So, anyway, that is um, that for a, for now. There's Seymour Rocks reporting from down under.